The banks are getting rich. Well, better put, the banks are getting richer and they're keeping homeowners poor. It's always been like this, but this, the situation is getting worse with higher mortgage interest rates. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you exactly what is going on. So basically the banks and lenders are financially enslaving new homeowners with higher mortgage interest rates. So today's video, it's a wake up call for you. I'm gonna show you something you might not like what you see. I just want you to know that you did nothing wrong. The most important thing that you can do right now is to understand the situation so that you can start building your wealth instead of making the banks and the lenders rich. Because they're getting rich and they're keeping everyday Americans poor. That's the reality. So let's run this scenario in a mortgage calculator. You can use any calculator. We're gonna use bank rates. The median sale price of a home in the US is about $400,000. So we're gonna use that. First time home buyers, they put down about 6%. Repeat buyers put down about 13%. So let's just use something in between. We're gonna go with 10%. The 30-year fixed mortgage interest rate has been floating around six to seven percent for the past seven months. So we're gonna use 6.5% as the rate in this example. With these variables, your monthly mortgage payments would be $2,275. This does not include property taxes, homeowners insurance, PMI, or HOA fees. Now this is this is what I want to show you. It's the amortization table. This gives you a breakdown of how much of your payment goes towards interest and principal. Okay, so here it is. This is the amort table. Let's just say that your loan starts in May and your first mortgage payments begins in June. So look at your monthly mortgage payments. You are paying $2,275 and only $325 is going towards paying down the principal. $1,950 is for paying interest. So that's 85.7% of your payment for interest, making the banks and the lenders rich at your expense. So look for yourself every month. It doesn't get much better each month. The interest, well, take a look for yourself. It's only, it's only going down by $2 a month, but you know, what's crazy or what's even crazier. If you go 10 years into this loan, you're still paying interest of over $1,600 a month. So let me ask you, how old, how old are you going to be in 10 years? How much older are you going to be in 10 years? Well, at that time, you're still going to be paying down this loan and 73% of what you pay will still be going towards interest. Okay. So the banks and the lenders, they love this. They love the situation. How could they not? They are enslaving people financially. That is the truth. So I want you to think about it like this. Okay. So you own a home and you should be proud that that's the American dream, right? But if you have a mortgage, are you truly the owner of your own home? And you could think about, you could, you could respond by saying, hell yeah, you know, of course I'm the owner of my own home. You know, it's your home. Well, I would, I would ask you, okay, well, what would happen if you stopped making the mortgage payments? How long would your home still stay yours if you stop making those monthly payments? Now, if you have a mortgage on rental properties, that's a difference. You're, you're using debt in a good way. You're getting someone else to pay off your loan for you and you're building equity. But if you have a mortgage on your primary residence, then you basically have a landlord, which is your lender. So you know that interest, you saw the numbers for yourself. You saw the interest that you're paying on a monthly basis. That's basically you paying rent to your landlord, which is the institution that has claim to your home. Now, do you see how bad this situation is? Do you understand how bad the situation is with higher mortgage interest rates? If you buy a $400,000 home and you put down 10%, that means that you're getting a loan for $360,000, right? With an interest rate of 6.5%. Over the course of the loan, you will pay $459,492 in interest. The interest ends up being more than the loan itself. You borrowed $360,000, but you will end up paying back $819,492. This is what financial slavery looks like. And this is considering that you're lucky enough to buy a home.
And honestly, I'll tell you this, what I showed you is a very generous example of the current situation because I didn't include all the other monthly expenses. So imagine that you add in the other monthly expenses. We're talking about property taxes, homeowners insurance, HOA fees. You can throw in PMI in there if you want. And your monthly payment, it could be over $3,000. And only $325 of that would be going towards paying down the loan. So those numbers, they're just ridiculous. So seriously, just think about that. Your monthly payments, it could be well over $3,000 and only $300 and change is going towards paying down the principal. Now, I wanna show you how this compares to people that got mortgages or refinanced a few years ago when interest rates were at 3%. And I know that some people here that are watching have mortgages under even 3%. So all the variables are the same, except now we're, we're using a mortgage interest rate of 3.0% compared to 6.5%. And look at the difference. The monthly mortgage payment has fallen from $2,275 to this $1,517. That's $758 less a month simply because the interest rate is lower. And when you look at the Amort table, it's just so much more reasonable. On a $1,517 mortgage payment, $617 is going towards paying down the loan. In this scenario, $900 is for interest, and you can compare that to $1,950 a month. So I'll tell you this, a lot of people are waiting, a lot of people are eagerly awaiting for mortgage interest rates to fall so that they can refinance, and I don't blame them. But I'm telling you, if you compare 6.5% to 5.0%, it's better, but it's still bad. If you get to refinance at 5.0%, you're still paying $1,500 in interest a month. At 4.5%, the interest is $1,350 a month. At 4.0%, it's still $1,200 a month. Now, I wanna say this, the purpose of this video is three things. The first thing is, it's to make you aware of the situation. So listen, the banks and the lenders, they're crushing everyday Americans. People are getting trapped and the majority of people don't know it. They don't even know. So how are you supposed to help yourself if you are unaware of what they're doing to you? They're trapping you. So here's the second thing. The second thing I wanna say is that do not confuse my message. I'm not saying don't get a mortgage. I'm not saying don't buy a home. I'm telling you that the banks and the lenders, they're trapping you, but you can get out of the trap. The quicker you pay down your mortgage, the less money that the banks and the lenders will make off you. They don't want you to make additional principal payments and they, they don't want you to know what is going on. They don't want you to be educated. They want you to be enslaved to them so that they can get rich at your expense. So in this scenario, $400,000 home, your loan is $360,000, mortgage interest rate of 6.5% on a 30 year fixed. If you pay an extra $100 a month, instead of paying off your loan in 30 years, it'll be cut down to 26 years. An extra $200 a month, you'll have it paid off in 24 years. An extra $500 a month, 19 years instead of 30. So I know that this is asking for a lot, but an extra $1,000 a month, you'll pay off your mortgage in 14 years instead of 30. So the third thing that I wanna say is that if you have some excess cash, here's what I would recommend that you do. So the first thing is that I would recommend that you build an emergency fund so that you don't have to dip into your savings, you don't have to liquidate your stocks, or you don't have to do an early withdrawal on a retirement plan. If you do have an emergency fund, so if, if you're still good there, then I wouldn't necessarily use your excess cash to pay down your mortgage because you have to look at what debt has higher interest rates. If you have credit card debts, you're gonna wanna focus on paying down that debt first because again, it has a higher, it'll typically have a higher interest rate. So that is, that is what you should be focusing on. If you're good there, you have an emergency fund, you don't have credit card debts, in that situation, a lot of people will be asking what they should do with their excess cash. People typically ask, 
you know, should I take my excess cash and invest it in the stock market or should I pay down my home? And the answer is that is that it depends. It depends on what is your mortgage interest rate. If your mortgage interest rate is 3%, if it's 3%, then I would stick your excess cash into an index fund in the stock market. You can easily beat 3% in the long run. If your mortgage interest rate is 6 to 7%, then I would say that you should really consider using any extra money to pay down your home. Because if you pay down your home and you have a mortgage interest rate at six to 7%, that would be like you getting a return on your investments of nine to 10% pre-tax, which is, I mean, that's pretty hard to beat. And I already gave you the numbers, how much more quickly that you will have your mortgage paid off. If you're a crypto investor, I mean, I know the mentality. I know that you want to get rich or die trying. I understand. I know that what I'm telling you seems like the safe thing to do. In other words, it sounds super boring. And I understand that a lot of crypto investors would just rather YOLO it. But to all crypto investors, just consider what I'm saying with a portion of your money, at least, to take a balanced approach. I'm not trying to ruin all the fun for you, but just think about it with a portion of your money. Fair enough. And I know that some people will say this, they're gonna make this argument. They're gonna say that with my mortgage interest payments, you're getting an itemized deduction. So all, all this interest that you're paying to the banks and lenders, it's not all that bad. So all this interest, you know, they would make the argument that it's being used to lower your taxes. You know, have you thought of that, Brian? A lot of people ask me that. Let me tell you something. When you're using mortgage interest as an itemized deduction, then you're probably deducting your taxes paid as well. Probably the max amount because it's limited, they capped it off. So the combination of the two is most likely making you subject to AMT. That's the alternative minimum tax. So even though mortgage interest is not affected by AMT, it's triggering it somewhere else and you're not getting the full tax benefit of all that interest that you're paying to the banks. So did you think of that? So probably not, maybe you should. Okay, I'm gonna end with this. Higher mortgage interest rates or higher interest rates in general, I mean, they're, they're terrible if you're, if you're a new homeowner, if you're getting a mortgage. And I wanna encourage you to do something about it. Do not be trapped for 30 years, especially if you have a high mortgage interest rate. You've witnessed the numbers for yourself. Get yourself free. Get yourself free as soon as possible. I don't want you to be a financial slave. That's all I'm saying. I'm just trying to help you. I want to see you achieve financial freedom. Do it for your family. Do it for yourself. Do it for justice because this is not right. So I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe. I thank you for the support and I wish you a very nice day. Take care.